Hello, welcome to this uh, uh, new video for uh, the top-down raising game. Uh, in this video, we are going to add a few more things to the uh, to the game. Uh, one is the lap counter, counting how many rounds we have driven, um, and how many uh, and uh, with like an uh, an end uh, result uh, panel or something. Uh, we're also going to add some. Um, um, sound for the car and we are going to use uh, a very simplistic way of mimicking a gearbox just by the sound and um, yeah I think that's uh, that's it what I know right now at the top of my head and we'll just see where we uh, where we end up uh, like always um, I'm not trying to make any cuts in the video so we are going to um, see where we get stuck and uh, what we can do uh, in one take. So let's uh, let's get started and I hope you can uh, follow along. Um, and if you don't, let me know in the in the comment section. So if I might need to change something or or whatever. OK, let's uh, get started uh, where we left off uh, pretty much. Uh, let's uh, use to go to uh, Visual Studio and then move to our checkpoint controller uh, class. I've uh, enlarged the um, uh, the code a little bit so you can uh, easy, uh, see it more easy. So what we want to do, we want to add uh, a, a counter for the lap times, um, and this is fairly easy if you uh, uh, if you look at it. So if we are at a serialized field, serialized field, uh, which is uh, an integer. And we call it number of laps. So this basically is for uh, the number of laps we want to drive uh, in the game. Um, we also are going to add uh, um, a raw image or a game object. Is also uh, let's make it game object. It doesn't really matter that much. And we call this the end race panel. Uh, which we are going to show when uh, when we uh, hit the, the number of laps, uh, and then we are making a small, uh, a tiny uh, current lap counter, uh, which uh, holds our uh, current our current lap. Yeah. So, um, what we basically will do every time we start a new lap, we will increment this uh, number of laps. Okay. Uh, let's make a public method uh, uh, here. Uh, not the method, but the uh, property for the for the class. Let's call this rep, lap, uh, lap remaining. I'm going to make this public because uh, maybe you want to uh, get a reference to it from another class. So it's a getter only, and we are going to return the number of laps, and we subtract the number of laps. Uh, sorry, current lap. So basically, uh, this will tell us the remaining laps. Yep. So I'm not using a setter here, only the getter. Uh, that's it. Uh, let's see. Now, if we start a lap um, here, uh, we need to uh, increase, uh, sorry, increase the number of laps. So uh, increase the number of laps. So we are going to say uh, add one. So this is the same as our current lap plus is one or uh, whatever, but this is uh, easier to uh, to write. So current lap, uh, we add one, and then we should make a new method which uh, will update number of laps text. Yeah, this is this is one way. Uh, this is um, to make a method here. You could also create an event passing the uh, maybe the number of laps you completed, or just create an event and let another class handle it. Uh, but right now we are just going to do it uh, right here for simplicity's sake. Um, so let's make a void update number of laps. This method will simply uh, update the lap counter text, um, which we I thought we already did this. No, I didn't. So let's make a new text field here. Uh, lap counter text number of laps counter yeah whatever um, so this will be our lap counter text and we are going to use a string oops string format 
um, and if you're unfamiliar with it, um, it takes in a string and it can take some um, um, a param, so that's like a comma separated uh, array of stuff, objects. Uh, so basically, every object you get here, like from here, where my cursor is right now, it's, it's an index. So everything between a curly braids is an index. So this is index zero, index one, and I can type whatever I want between it. So the first item here will uh, be placed at the zero. So this will be our, our current lab. And then we are going to add the uh, labs remaining we just created. So basically, if we put a slash between this, this will output to something like uh, uh, one or three. And when we increment it, it's two or three. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that will be the number of labs. Uh, change the method to the right one. Uh, so now it will keep on going uh, indefinitely uh, and not check if we are have completed it. So if we look at the end lab uh, method we have, we should uh, uh, check here. So we can say here, if uh, labs remaining, if this equals zero, um, well, then we are... Uh, in the end of the race, so we can return it here and we can show the end race panel. Uh, set active true. So this will enable the panel which we still need to create in the method. Um, let's make a quick run through here. Uh, yeah, should be okay. So basically, when we start, um, the start lab method gets called. It will increment the con uh, current lab, so it will go from zero to one, and it will update the text. The text will display it, uh, and every time we uh, end the lab, uh, yeah, end the lab, it will check if we have any labs remaining. Then it will quit, and otherwise it will start a new lab. That should uh, that should work. So let's switch over to Unity now and make the uh, required changes we uh, we have. So in the checkpoint controller, um, we have our end race panel and our number of laps. Let's make this uh, three or something. The lap counter should be added to the canvas. So let's duplicate the uh, fastest lap time text or whatever. Just hit uh, Control D, hit F2 to change the name. Let's call this uh, lap counter text there we go and now instead of anchoring it to the top left we want to anchor it to the top right of the screen like here so we are going to hit shift alt and click the top right so it will move to the top right as well now change the default text to like zero zero uh, let's make this even 10 10 so it gives us some room to uh, work with Let's align the text to the right. There it goes. And now let's make like a small minus 10, minus 10. So it gets a little bit uh, separated from the from the edges of your screen. Um, the reason I do 10, 10 is basically uh, maybe you would have like a shorter width uh, and then it will like uh, uh, drop out. So it's easy to see, you know, into something which is uh, which uh, is the large, largest value or something. Uh, okay, that should do it. Now let's get to the checkpoint controller. We need to uh, create a canvas too. Uh, let's create a new uh, raw image. And uh, let's call this ant lab uh, panel. And let's increase it, the width a little bit to three, four hundred, whatever you prefer. It's just uh, we also add a new text item to it. I'm gonna align it in the center, and then uh, the race has ended. Choose whatever font you want. I'm just keep going to keep it like this. You could add buttons here to like restart the race or whatever. Uh, 
yeah, end lap. So back to the checkpoint controller and we assign the end lap to the panel. And I already did the number of laps and the lap counter text as well. There we go. Now let's, um, yeah, let's see what happens. It's first it should say, uh, it says one of two now. I thought I said one of three. Uh, let's see. Um, number of life three, yeah. Let's see that again. Okay, it says one of two, so it immediately adds one to the uh, to the start lap that works, um, but um, it counts uh, the total number of laps is too is uh, too uh, low. So let's switch back and see what we have done wrong. Um, laps remaining. Uh, yeah, number of laps minus current lap. So if it's uh, three. So, oh yeah, 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 wrong, sorry. Of course, this isn't the laps remaining. This should be the number of laps. Yeah, so uh, probably you saw this already when I did this a few minutes ago. Um, let's, uh, let's switch back. I think this should work right now. Now I'm not gonna finish the entire race because the uh, there we go. So now it says one of three. Um, I really should make a, a shorter lap here. So I will do that for the next video. Just a quick uh, circle. But for now, I'm just going to make one lap here to see if it increments. There we go. It's pretty fun, actually. I'm still working on the... Uh, on the game itself, not with with uh, as much time as I wanted to. Yeah, there it goes. It goes uh, two from three, so that uh, that will work. All right, now the end lap panel. Um, I've hidden it. Uh, that will work because I have assigned it in uh, in the inspector, so it will uh, it will still be able to uh, detect if it's uh, it's done. So let's make the uh, one more time. Set the number of laps to one. And now we should get uh, the panel when we are done. So one more. Oops. One more uh, lap around the track. And after this, we are going to add some sounds. Maybe we should add uh, the screeching sounds for the tires as well, because that will make it a little bit more interesting to, uh, to race, I think. Final corner. So now we should get the the race has ended. Now, right now I'm still able to control the car, so you should like uh, block that. Um, but okay, uh, works as uh, expected. So let's change it uh, to the number of laps of three. And now let's move on to the sound. Um, I've already added an engine sound here, uh, which I'm going to remove because this is the wrong one. Um, and I'm going to drag in uh, a different one. There we go. This uh, and you can um, you simply need to uh, Google it uh, for an engine loop. Uh, if I play the sound right here, you will not be able to hear it. Um, but it's basically a loop of your end of an engine uh, running some sort of stationary. Now, to get a really realistic car engine sound, uh, this won't work. You know, you will need something uh, better. You need like different sounds for uh, accelerating, uh, off gas, decelerating in different gears and such, maybe combine them, uh, add some other twists and sounds and, and, uh, and puffs and cracks and whatever to make it more realistic. Um, we are just mimicking it here right now. So we are basically going to use uh, the pitch of an audio source to uh, fake uh, car shifting and some sound. And it will work, um, but if you plan to release something and you want to release something good, you really need to change your sounds. Okay, um, but
But what I usually do is just make um, uh, placeholders for, for everything and fine tune it along the way. If I start fine tuning right now, uh, in two weeks I will find out that I wanted to do it different and then I have lost all my time. So just simply make it um, uh, convincible for now. Okay, so now we have the uh, the sound engine here. Uh, sorry, the sound engine loop. Let's make a new script and let's call this uh, car engine. Now and again, instead of uh, building it inside of the player car, we are going to make a different uh, a different class for it. Now, if we open it up in uh, in your editor of choice, uh, there we go. Uh, Tells me, asks me to reload the, uh, the uh, solution. Now, if if you for some reason again the, the same old bug uh, many people have, and it doesn't uh, recognize the uh, money behavior and doesn't build, simply right click on the project and choose um, unload. And now right click the project again and set reload, and then it will fix your uh, will fix it for you. Okay, so car engine. Uh, first off, we want to require the component with a type of player car. So we can only add this to a player car, but also we want an audio source. Now, when we are going to add this to the car in, uh, to the player car, it will automatically add the audio source. Yeah. Okay. Um, did I switch to the editor? Yeah. Okay. Now, what we want, uh, we know we have a player car, so we can simply get a reference to it player car equals uh, should be no. uh, get component player car and same goes for the audio source uh, source there we go audio source and we can do this safely because we require the components uh, yeah okay now in the update method we want to know the, the speed of the car and basically what we will do now is like make uh, we check how fast we are going and if we are greater than whatever speed we set the the pitch um, to it of the of the audio file to something uh, and we throw in some numbers to get it right. Um, let's first go to the player car here. And because we have a speed here, which comes from the uh, uh, magnitude of the, of the velocity of the rigid body. Yeah, and we divide this by uh, a very big number, so it will be something very low. Uh, what we want to do, we want to make a variable out of this. So I'm going to use uh, an underscore here uh, and then control period and hit enter to rename the variable to underscore speed so I know it's a private variable and then remove the float and then here we put it back in yeah. now let's make a uh, property here which gets the speed of the car only a getter and this returns the speed now the reason I do this and not make uh, a public uh, variable for speed and then set it here are is twofold because you can change the speed from somewhere else which isn't possible uh, but also I might want to do something here with like uh, some multiple uh, changes and whatever uh, to get the speed to a number which uh, sounds right yeah but I'm going to keep it uh, just like this switch back to the car uh, engine and let's check out the player car speed. Yeah, so just print out the player's car speed. Now we move to the uh, to Unity again. There we go. We go to the car, and we add the engine. Now you can see it also adds the audio source. We're not going to do anything with it right now. We just want to see the speed of the car. So let it play. Let's hit play. Enable the console. Now you can see. We are currently speed zero. Now, if I'm going to drive, there we go. I can see very low numbers. Just going to keep on going straight until I'm as fast as possible. So it's like seven, eight, 
0.8 is pretty much the pretty much the fastest thing you can go on the straight. So if I uh, uh, quit this, let's scroll back. You can see the speed start very low until we are like 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 3, 4, etc. So we are going to use those numbers just to find a position of um, of our gears. Now you could make like uh, a serializable class so you can edit these in the editor but I'm just going to stuff these in in the uh, in the code because um, I'm pretty sure I will not use this in the end you know for the same reason I just told uh, let's first um, make we need like a, I would say like a modifier so we can change the pitch a little bit um, from the editor uh, just to tune it the way we want so we make a modifier uh, we'll tell you more about it when we get there let's first let's uh, say if player car speed if it's greater than uh, 0 0.04 something like that I think let's make here a, a float uh, sound pitch what is that? No, sound pitch and uh, we set the sound pitch um, to um, 1.5. Now this isn't the pitch of the sound, we are going to use a different uh, calculation with it as well. And this is all uh, just uh, arbitrary or how you call it. Uh, play a car speed. This will be like the next gear. Let's do it uh, zero, zero, 0.5. I'm not really sure what how many gears we actually need. We don't want to have the car shift around constantly, so maybe we'd like a 5.5, five, give it a little bit more room. And then we say the sound pitch equals to 1.8F. And let's do it again for seven maybe. So we will be longer in, the, in this pitch. Now we switch this to uh, two. And maybe a last one for long stretch, 0.8. Uh, maybe 2.5. I'm not really sure what will happen. Uh, then we are going to adjust the pitch of the car, of this audio source. So we say audio source pitch. This equals to the player car speed. And we are going to like... Uh, multiply this by whatever I'm, I'm going to open up a calculator real soon you will not be able to see this but I was like 0 0.005 uh, 0 0.04 is what I saw there we go let's now if I multiply this by uh, 35 or something it will be a little bit higher than one uh, I'm gonna uh, divide this by our sound pitch let's call this sound pitch difference really uh, oops sound pitch now it unuses uh, makes it sound pitch diff so you can change it to something um, what you makes what your mind makes of it all right, so we are going to do it like this. Now this gives us the, uh, uh, let's put this a variable, uh, a value here, otherwise it will tell us it's not assigned. Now we are going to multiply it by the modifier. So this way we can like increase or decrease the pitch a little bit. Um, and we also always want to have like an idle sound. So Basically, when we will start the game right now, it, this will be zero because our car speed will be zero. So we are going to add like a small amount of whatever 0.6 to uh, to at least give it some sound. I'm going to keep the print out here just to see uh, if I need to make some changes uh, later on. Now let's get back to uh, Unity and test out our changes here. Um, wait, we still need to assign the, uh, the audio, of course. So I'm going to add the loop to the audio clip. I'm going to set it 
set it to loop and I'm going to adjust the uh, volume here a bit and we need to take a look at the pitch and now I'm not really sure if it's going to be loud or not so cover your ears and see what happens here we go all right so you can hear the sound it's it's like in a low uh, state now let's go to the engine and change the modifier to uh, one maybe I don't think it will change now but there we go and you can hear it shifting back I hope at least that it's recording my sound I will need to check that so this uh, works uh, fair enough let's uh, increase the modifier and see if it actually changes there we go see you can hear it sounding a little bit different so there we go well this works uh, this works like intended um, I'm going to close down this video because otherwise the video will be a little bit long and I've got some comments from you guys that some of the videos might be a little bit too long um, so yeah that's it um, in the next video we will cover uh, skit sounds and we will also detect uh, surface changes so that we can change the particle effect when we are uh, off-road and also reduce the speed of the car when we are off-road yeah well uh thank you very much for your time and i hope you enjoyed it um i'm seeing i'm almost nearly at 2k uh, subscribers and i'm really really happy with that um but uh, i think we can use a little bit more so if you would like please uh, uh like the video and if you haven't subscribed already please do so thank you bye bye